This mom left her kids home alone for almost a week because she wanted to party on a cruise. And this lawyer decided to get into her birthday suit at a bar after a few drinks. Let's get right into some of the wildest crimes, starting with number six, the most selfish mom. Lakeisha Woods Williams, a 29-year-old from Houston, Texas, got in serious trouble after leaving her two young children alone for nearly a week while she went on a cruise. Authorities say she set off for Miami, then boarded a cruise to Puerto Rico, leaving her kids ages six and eight behind in their luxury high-rise apartment. When neighbors noticed something unusual, they contacted local authorities and a welfare check revealed a pretty upsetting situation. Inside the upscale Houston apartment, officers found the children living in a disheveled space with a strong odor of urine and food and trash scattered around. The children told the police that their mom had left for a trip and they weren't sure when she'd be back. Although Williams had set up a webcam and used her phone to check on them occasionally, it wasn't enough to assure their well-being. The police report also noted that Williams didn't make it easy for them to get in touch with her. She reportedly avoided contact and frequently changed her location while authorities tried to reach her. Williams eventually returned home only to be arrested the very next day on two charges related to child endangerment. Her bond was set at $40,000. Neighbors reported seeing Williams leave with luggage one day, but for whatever reason, didn't call the police for six days. The McKinley, the high-rise where Williams and her kids live, is known for its luxury, with rents ranging from $2,500 to over $8,000 a month. But despite the comfort of her surroundings, Williams' actions have raised serious questions about her responsibilities as a parent. Fortunately, both children were found to be healthy and were placed with their aunt immediately after the welfare check. As of this video's release, Williams has been charged with abandoning a child with intent to return and is being held on a $25,000 bond. It's hard to imagine how leaving children that young alone for nearly a week seemed like a reasonable choice to her. Even when kids seem capable, they're still just kids. The leap from recognizing that they're little and need care to deciding they can handle being left alone for days is beyond basic logic and understanding. Williams is about as selfish a person as someone can be. Number five, abnormal issues. Brian Casala, a Connecticut-based party planner and founder of the popular events company Vivid Events, is now facing serious charges over a deceptive scheme he allegedly orchestrated to satisfy a personal obsession. With a reputation for delivering upscale event services, Casella seemingly lived a dual life. Using his influence and resources to conduct a series of unsettling tests on an unsuspecting employee. In an elaborate ruse, Casella allegedly convinced one of his employees, who was dealing with digestive issues, to join a fake medical study. He promised her thousands in compensation, appealing to her need for extra income as she saved for a home with her husband. He even had her sign a confidentiality agreement instructing her not to discuss the study with anyone else at the company. The so-called test started modestly, with Casella using a stethoscope on her exposed abdomen. But over time, he abandoned the medical pretense, going as far as to press his bare ear to her stomach and lift her clothing himself. The situation escalated further when he persuaded her to lie still after taking a sleep aid, though she only pretended to sleep, suspecting his intentions. During one session, he allegedly bound her with zip ties to prevent any movement, which takes the creep factor to a whole other level. These encounters continued for nearly a year until Casella's actions reached a breaking point when Casella, under the guise of cleaning up gel from a sonogram test, reportedly wiped the woman in a way that felt highly invasive and beyond what she'd believed was part of the stomach-focused study. After a final disturbing interaction, the woman cut ties with vivid events and later collaborated with police to expose the scheme. A search revealed thousands of photos and videos of various victims showing Casella had been executing his plan for years. As of the release of this video, Casella has been charged and is awaiting trial. It's weird that, as creepy as this dude is, he managed to get away with it for so long. 
This thing kept going after the lady was zip-tied, which is sad, because she probably continued with the study out of financial need and fear of losing her job, because otherwise, just why? And Brian, isn't there enough stuff online that you don't have to go around victimizing people in real life? Seriously, what a creep. Number four, a tragic relationship. Jennifer Sweeney from Tinton Falls, New Jersey, received a conviction for her role in the tragic passing of her girlfriend, Tyrita Julius. This disturbing case revealed a dark chain of events rooted in jealousy and betrayal. Sweeney's jealousy grew over time, eventually leading her to hatch a plan with the help of her friend, Andre Harris. In late 2015, Sweeney persuaded Harris to go after Julius, fearing that Julius might leave her. On a November evening, Harris ambushed Julius while she was sitting in her car with her teenage daughter. Harris fired multiple rounds at the car, injuring both Julius and her daughter. They survived, but spent months recovering in the hospital. Remarkably, during this time, Sweeney continued to visit Julius, even as she secretly plotted her next move. Just a few months later, in early 2016, Julius suddenly disappeared. Sweeney had been the last person seen with her, which was obviously incredibly suspicious. Investigators worked to piece together the case and eventually uncovered some pretty chilling details. Sweeney had asphyxiated Julius with an electrical cord. In a grim attempt to cover up the crime, she enlisted Harris once again, this time forcing him to help bury Julius's body in his own backyard. In court, Harris testified against Sweeney, recounting how she had driven to his home with Julius's body in her car and pressured him into helping with the burial. He described her as controlling and jealous, saying she told him, if I can't have her, no one can, which is such a cliche thing, we didn't think people actually said that. Harris's testimony was crucial as he revealed details that led to Sweeney's conviction. As of the release of this video, Sweeney has been sentenced to 95 years in prison for the 2016 passing of her girlfriend after she was convicted of multiple charges. She was 38 at the time of her sentencing and must serve at least 85% of her sentence before being eligible for parole, effectively ensuring she spends the rest of her life in prison. It's tragic that the relationship ended with someone losing their life, but suspicion and jealousy, when left unchecked, can twist love into something unrecognizable. In the end, it's a powerful reminder of how fragile trust can be and how dangerous it becomes when replaced by fear and resentment. Number three, the intoxicated shoplifting priest. The Weed Wedgernowski, a former priest at St. Mary's Catholic Church in Alpha, New Jersey, faced serious consequences after a shoplifting attempt at Walmart quickly turned chaotic. According to reports, he tried to make off with less than $50 worth of items, including ice cream and oven mitts. But this ordeal didn't end with just a simple theft. When officers confronted Wojnarowski outside the store, he didn't cooperate. Instead, he sped off, leading them on a tense chase through the quiet streets of a quiet neighborhood in Poet Kong Township. The chase finally came to an end when Wojnarowski's vehicle veered off the road, coming to a stop in some random person's front yard. Once officers arrested him, they reportedly found open containers of alcohol inside the vehicle, alongside the shoplifted items. Further testing revealed his blood alcohol level was more than twice the legal limit, which escalated the situation further. Wojnarowski was charged with multiple offenses, including shoplifting, eluding police, driving while intoxicated, and additional traffic violations. The local diocese of Medican responded to the situation, confirming that Wojnarowski would step away from his role at St. Mary's to focus on treatment out of state. According to diocese and officials, he acknowledged his struggle with alcohol and expressed deep remorse for his actions. They shared that he was committed to making changes to prevent similar incidents in the future. This incident reminds us that even those in positions of spiritual guidance can face deep, personal struggles. Wojnarowski's story shows the human side of those who lead, showing how quickly someone can drift off course when personal struggles remain unaddressed. His decision to step back and seek help could ultimately become an example of accountability and redemption, not only for himself, but for anyone in his parish that may be struggling themselves. Number two, the embezzling priest. 
Father Oscar Diaz from Santa Rosa, California, got in an unusual predicament when he was involved in a car crash. But this wasn't just any accident. It exposed a startling secret. When emergency responders arrived, they discovered nearly $18,000 in parish donations hidden in security bags in his vehicle. But that discovery barely scratched the surface. As police investigated further, they uncovered an additional $77,000 in cash that Diaz had allegedly taken from various parishes where he had served. Over his 25-year career, he had built connections with multiple churches, quietly siphoning off donations over the years. He had claimed the cash was his salary, but the evidence suggested that it was less of a salary and more of a well-orchestrated scheme. Throughout his time serving, Diaz had allegedly pocketed over $95,000, according to the Diocese of Santa Rosa. The Diocese's own internal investigation confirmed that he had been diverting donations for at least 15 years. In response, Bishop Robert Vassa expressed his deep disappointment, acknowledging that Diaz's actions had profoundly betrayed the communities he was entrusted to serve. And the crazy thing is that he's going to get away with it. In an insane and completely ridiculous twist, authorities hesitated to pursue formal charges. The accounting protocols at each parish made it challenging to prove theft beyond a reasonable doubt, meaning that apparently their bookkeeping was pretty sloppy. It's a little bit suspicious that all of the parishes Diaz served had sloppy bookkeeping, but whatever. He saw an opportunity and he took it. Anyway, as a result, Diaz evaded legal consequences, leading many to feel justice was left unserved, especially since such a sizable amount was involved. In the aftermath, Diaz was suspended from his duties, and the diocese promised to replace the stolen funds for the affected parishes. Although no criminal charges were filed, the diocese had pledged to continue its investigation, ensuring full accountability within its reach. It sucks that because of a technicality, Diaz walked away without any legal repercussions. And of course, the DSC says they're going to do something about it and hold Diaz accountable. But mm, let's face it, they don't exactly have a great track record for holding people accountable for far more severe crimes, let alone things like embezzlement. Number one, because Florida. Kelly Elkins, a longtime Florida lawyer, got herself in a bit of legal trouble after an unusual incident at a bar in St. Petersburg. Elkins, 49, was apparently denied service at the lounge bar when the staff said she was a little too drunk to be served. But Elkins disagreed and then proved them 100% right by acting like a total idiot. According to reports, after being turned away, Elkins walked to the restroom only to emerge minutes later without a stitch of clothing. The bar manager asked her to dress and leave, but Elkins ignored the request since no one was going to tell her to put on clothes, prompting the manager to call local deputies. When they arrived, officers found her standing in the middle of the bar in this state. After multiple requests, she eventually put on a hoodie, but left it open, which is such a lawyer thing to do, finding a loophole, and refused to wear pants insisting she was too tired. Elkinson's arrest for disorderly conduct wasn't her first run in that week. Just days before, she had been arrested for failing to pay a $38 bill at a Thai restaurant. Apparently, she enjoyed lunch and several alcoholic drinks, but when presented with the bill, claimed she couldn't pay and offered her purse as a substitute. This led to her first arrest of the week, though she was released the following morning. These incidents have surprised many people because of Elkinson's otherwise steady professional record. Having practiced law for over 20 years, she has no prior disciplinary actions listed with the Florida Bar and was considered a member in good standing. In fact, her LinkedIn profile highlights her legal work and her role as a licensed real estate agent. She also operates a private practice, a venture she's managed independently for six years. Despite her professional status, this isn't Elkins' first brush with controversy. Back in 2019, she faced a charge of driving under the influence after police reportedly found her inside her BMW intoxicated with the engine running. That charge was eventually downgraded to reckless driving. Florida. What a wild place, right? 
click to watch one of these next videos.